After doing many complicated projects these last few weeks, I thought I would start with a nice easy one for this weekend. So I'm going to put together our Galaxy Far Far Away pattern. I've already gone ahead and cut all the different pieces. And we're going to get started by sewing all of these pieces into a piece of fabric that we will then cut these appliques out. So let's get started. I have pieced all of those little pieces together to create basically a patchwork piece of fabric. And I'm going to now use our templates that come in the pattern that are full size so you don't have to enlarge them. <clears throat> So there's the two symbols, the Millennium Falcon, and the Star Destroyer, I think it is. And we need to trace these on a fusible web. So in this case, I am using heat and bond featherlight to do this. And it looks like it will. I don't have to tape two pieces together. This is, the ship is not wider than my paper. So there are two sides to fusible web. In this case, there's a shiny side and a dull side. The dull side's the paper side. The shiny side is the glue. So you want to draw on the dull side. And I always use the Sharpie Extra Ultra Fine Point tip markers because the tip is the same thickness as the blade of your scissors. So you don't have to guess on which side of the line to um, cut on. And so then we're just going to trace this. everything traced. If you look in the pattern, it will tell you how to position this piece on top of our funky shaped patchwork fabric. So this one, and this is going to go on the back. So the illustration shows you what it looks like upside down and then the glue side goes against the fabric. So we're going to iron those on, cut them out, and be ready to start putting everything together on our background. Now we're over here at the ironing board and I have cut each piece out a little bit larger than the drawn line, get rid of all the excess, which is here. And then what I do with those is I keep a bag by my machine with all these big scraps in it. And when I have smaller projects, I use it for that because the stuff can be expensive and you don't want to just be throwing it away. So that's a little tip on what I do with all my fusible. And then once we're ready to press these, you want to make sure you have the fabric wrong side up and you have the piece with the glue side down. And this one's not bad, but um, the white one you'll see in a second. I always iron out any wrinkles first, then I lay my piece down on it and I iron it. And you can see it's starting to change color. Each fusible web has a different amount of heat and time that you need to expose it to. So make sure whatever brand you buy that you read the directions on how much heat and how how to do this. So that is what we're going to do for all our pieces is we're going to iron them onto the wrong side of the fabric. Then on this one, I marked the waist areas where I need to cut away. So I do that just so I don't accidentally cut into a good part of the symbol. So there are those two. 
Now we're gonna move on to the ship. I don't know if I can get any higher. So this is the Star Destroyer. This is our piece of fabric that we pieced for it. And you can see here, like I have a twisted seam that I just didn't press carefully enough. What you can do is you can clip it up to the sewn line, flip it. Don't do that underneath it, because there's glue on it. So you can check all your seams. In this case, I can press that seam flat, because you don't want to have a bulky seam before you iron the piece of fusible on, because it will add, it'll show in the end result. So I've already pressed the whole thing from the front. Now I'm going through the back and making sure it's very flat. This is also a good time if you have best press. I will make sure this is as flat as I can get it. And sometimes it just needs a little bit of help. I don't usually use steam in my iron because especially with fusible webs, a lot of times it won't play nice if your iron is wet and you're trying to press it down. So I do not put water in my iron. I always use spray bottles and I use it sparingly. But in this case, I really want these seams flat. And there's a mix of flannel and cotton in this one. So those flannel seams can be bulky. So again, yet another reason to get them nice and flat. You do have to press from the front first so you don't get any fabric to roll in your seams. This would be a secondary press. All right, now we got them all flat. That's good. Take one more look on the front. Make sure everything's nice and flat. So here we go. Ready to put our ship onto the fabric. And in the pattern, I show you, this is that piece of fabric oriented. And so I show you how the ship piece, glue side down, goes on here. This is a suggestion if you want it to look a different way or you're, miss you're cutting off a fabric you like, you can position it however you want as long as the whole thing is on, covered in fabric on all four sides. So now that I have that positioned where I want it, I'm just double checking with my hand that all the seams are going the right way. And then I'm ready to press. And I'm gonna start here at the top and work out to the point. Work in the middle and work out. You don't want to start on the end. It's easier to start in the middle because in this case, I can see the seam is not quite flat. So I'm going to go in there and straighten that. But if I started on the end, I would not have seen that. So I always start in the middle, work out. I just want to make sure you get a nice amount of heat, whatever the directions say that come with your pro product. There we go. I think that's nice and, and hot. Sometimes you'll see it change color. You want to let it cool, but you can peel it up and see if the glue is separating from the paper nicely, which it is in this case. One more press and we're good. Now on to the Millennium Falcon. Okay, here's this one. Again, you'll see the seams are not quite as flat as I like them. And I'm going to orient this the way it is in the pattern so that I know how to lay my ship down. And we're going to give it a good spray and a good press. I like these um, spray bottles that are, they kind of, they don't come all out at one time. It comes out in a nice fine mist. It's kind of a time release spray on it. I have a couple of them. There's one I got in my White Mountain and then I found this one I had to, had to have. It says Iron Maiden with the crazy ironing lady. So they both have best press in it, but you can never have too many spray bottles. So get this all nice and flat. 
a little bit of patience will make the quilt come out that much nicer. So, and sometimes I'm in such a hurry, I don't pay attention to the details. So learn from my mistakes. Oh, see, we got one twisted here. There we go, all nice and flat. Okay, and we're gonna check the front. Make sure we didn't roll any fabric. You see how nice and flat that is. Flip it back over, one more spot. And then we're ready to lay our Millennium Falcon, our ship, on here. This one goes like this. Again, check with your hands. Make sure you didn't twist anything when you set it down. Start in the middle and work your way out. This is a nice, fun technique because now we just have to button blanket stitch around four shapes versus if we did a applic full applique ship and you have to do all the different parts. And so this is a nice beginner one. Though with these little nibs up here, it's a, you need to have at least blanket stitched once or twice. So we'll say advanced beginner. There we go. And so we'll check the corner. It's all separating, that's good. So, that side looks good. We're ready to cut these out. Now there's two schools of thoughts on what pair of scissors you would use to cut this out, uh, whether it be your fabric scissors or paper. And I use the sharpest scissors I have because yes, you're going through paper and you're going through fabric. So you need sharp scissors. I go have my scissors sharpened by a very good knife maker here locally in Phoenix, the knife shop. Um, and so I don't worry too, too much about paper versus fabric because I'm always having them sharpened. Uh, that being said, if you're cringing, go ahead and use your paper scissors. Um, and if you're more like me and don't care, go ahead and use whatever scissors you like. two symbols and we need to position them on our background and this is what the quilt looks like so how I do it no matter whose pattern it is is I measure this and I mark my center point now I know the quadrants and I take my fabric and I've pressed it in quarters. And I would do this at the ironing board, but I don't have a way to show you over there, so I'm gonna do it over here. So we know down here in the bottom goes this guy, and you wanna make sure you leave seam allowance. And then this guy there's my center line, so then I can position where it goes, but you need to also take off the paper backing. So to pull the backing off of this, you can scratch it with a pin 
Let me turn the crack in here. We'll iron those down, and that'll be that half. And I would recommend, if you haven't done a lot of applique, to do iron those two down, finish the raw edges, and then iron the other two pieces down. Uh, in this case, I do a lot of it, so I'm going to go ahead and press it all down so I can demo the blanket stitch. So we're going to go ahead and press all these down and then we'll be ready to finish our edges and everything will be appliqued down. Okay, so we are going to use Aurifil 2024 white, 50 weight for the white emblem. We're going to use Aurifil 2230 50 weight for the red emblem. And then for the ships, because there's flannel and cotton and there's a lot going on, I switched over to 40 weight and I'm using color 2692 Orifil. So those are the three colors. The next thing we need to do is we need to use an open toe foot. This is an open toe foot. If you look at a normal foot, you can't see where the needle is. This is a quarter inch foot. This is the standard foot for a lot of sewing machines. And you can't see what you're doing. So you really need an open toe foot for this step. And a lot of people will try to do it without the open toe foot, but I can't stress that enough. That will make your life so much easier. So we're gonna put that on. We're gonna start with the uh, white. So let's get ourselves set up here. We're going to use a blanket stitch, which is straight with a bite, straight with a bite, straight with a bite. Um, the straight edge runs along the edge of your applique and the bite goes into the applique. And I'm, I have a Bernina, so I like the standard stitch width and length. I just have to use stitch number 45. Everybody's machine is different. And then I pick a nice easy place to start. Your foot usually will have a center line marked on it. That center line should go along the edge of your piece and if you have adjustable needle position, you wanna make sure your needle is in the center position. And then I hand crank down the first stitch, pull it up through, and I set myself up so that I'm ready to go. The other thing is if your sewing machine will let you do needle position down, turn that on because that will act like a third finger. It'll hold everything in place. So we're ready to go. And when you start out, start out slow. I also recommend getting like a practice piece first before you do this, uh, just to warm yourself up if you don't do it all the time. And then I don't back stitch. I just, when I come back around, I'll go over the first stitch again. If I'm not gonna go over it, then I would back stitch the bottom. So you see I'm gonna stop here. Needle is down and then I can pivot the piece. And when you have a really big piece, it helps to roll up the excess out of your way so it's easier to maneuver under the machine. I always like to try to do the, the bigger parts first to kind of anchor the piece in the background. Depending on the piece of a web you use, sometimes it'll pop up faster than others because it is just a temporary adhesive. So you can see now we're fighting with the bulk of the quilt and I have it rolled up so it'll fit under the sewing machine. Anytime I do this and I have white, I always make sure to use white thread on white, black on white, just unless you're perfect, it just shows up so drastically and it kind of takes away from it. So even if I do the entire thing in black, if I had something like this, I would do just this in white. Then I'm gonna, again, this is where I like having the needle down because I can just pivot it around to get the bulk away from the under the machine. So here we come up to where I started. I will go over the first stitch, reverse one stitch. And then I won't cut my threads, I'm just going to pull this up 
and reposition and leave this. And then at the end, I'll clip all my threads. It just makes it a little easier. is the hardest one of the whole quilt. Now the rest of these will go very quickly. And these are just all my connecting threads I'm cutting away. Galaxy far, far away. <laughs>